Warning, this video features one or more ships that are primarily acquired through gambling mechanics. The chance of winning such ships is very low, and there's no guarantee that you will win regardless of how many times you gamble. If you think you might have a problem with gambling addiction, please stop the video and seek help immediately. Greetings everyone and welcome back to another Starship Review. Today we take a look at the United Earth Defense Force vessel, a warship slash destroyer added to the Infinity Lockbox. This, um, well it's called a ship, featured in Season 3 of Discovery when the crew returned to Earth, only to find out that the Earth had left the Federation and Starfleet. Earth had become very isolationist, which is not very Roddenberry or Star Trek, but that's not what this video is about, and turtled up, placing a huge shield around the Earth. Thematically, this defense platform cosplaying as a starship is right on the money, right down to the emphasis on shields given to the Triton console. Before we get there though, let's talk about the ship itself. The UED vessel, and I can't think of a better name for it as a shorthand, has the rare distinction of two commander seats with a 4432 layout. One of the commander seats is also a command spec, making it a full command ship, complete with inspiration mechanics. The other is a universal commander seat, allowing for a huge combination of boff abilities that would be simply impossible on virtually all other ships. Aside from the obviously useful stuff like call emergency artillery and concentrate firepower, you can also run gravity well rank 3, attack pattern beta 3, or mine dispersal pattern 3. If you really wanted to tank, you could even do reverse shield polarity 3. The flexibility and power is not without drawbacks, however. Having only four seats means that you lose a bridge officer and their associated traits. This amounts to a loss in crit chance and severity or cat 2 damage depending on the boff. Even if you use the universal commander seat for science, the lieutenant commander engineering seat makes it difficult to get as many control abilities on the ship as you might want for things like unconventional systems or even synthetic good fortune, assuming they ever fix it. Still, it has five tactical console slots and the best mastery package in the game, and the upsides are not only substantial, but also quite unique. Long story short, this is a damn good ship. Oh, and it also has a sick animation for rock and roll, the clicky you get for having pilot as your primary specialization. Let's talk about accessories. First, the console, Mobile Defense Net. The passives gives you maximum shield power and shield capacity. The clicky causes you to take a maneuverability hit and project a dome centered a few kilometers behind you. This dome grants allies shield buffs, including reduced bleed through, hardness, and regen per second. The regeneration scales off the shield restoration skill, as you might imagine. When you consider that it affects all allies, including hangar pets and the like, it's capable of putting out some big healing numbers. Unfortunately, it doesn't last for very long, and for a variety of reasons, shields are not a popular way to increase survivability. It's a bit like taking a bucket of water to a grease fight. The trait, Interlaced Emitters, gives a buff to your target when you use a Shield Heal Bridge Officer ability that redistributes shields, increases hardness, and makes them immune to shield drain for 6 seconds. Starship traits are extremely precious, and this one just doesn't do enough to find a home in my opinion. The uptime on the shield drain immunity isn't a game changer for shield tanking, and a game changer is what would be needed. There are simply too many incentives to focus on hull and hull restoration over shields. Let's talk about the ratings. In terms of performance, it has to be 5 stars. The full command spec, universal commander seat, destroyer mastery package, and excellent console layout are all too strong to ignore. It's probably not going to take the number one spot on the leaderboards, but it's definitely a top shelf contender. In terms of ship score, it's got to be 5 stars. This is one of the most thematic ships they've released in a while, for better or worse. I personally like the idea of a starship that's basically a space station, but I understand other people don't. 
the rock and roll animation is amazing, and I wish that they had used it for when you're at full impulse. Normally, I'd take a point off here for it bringing a premium ship without two different specialization seats, but the other stuff is just so good, I'm kind of kind of look past that. It has two unique animations, and both the console and trait align to what the vessel was about on the show. In terms of accessories, I'm only going to give it two stars. Although heavily thematic, the console is a solution in search of a problem, and the trait is just weak and unimpressive. There's no experimental weapons, hangar pets, or other goodies to sweeten the pot either. In conclusion, the UED vessel is a very powerful ship, but at this price point, I can't really recommend it. For the same money, you can get the sticks, which will perform just as well, if not better, as both a kinetic platform and a tank. Or you could get a powerful trait like Universal Designs that can go on all your ships. This is more like a toy than a must-have, so even though I actually do like this ship quite a bit, much to my own surprise, I'll be saving my money for something that offers better value. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vid, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see more of my stuff in the future. As always, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.